Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Operation Midnight Climax. This experiment took place in the 1950s and it was one of those mind control research projects that was sponsored by the CIA. This was actually just one experiment that was a part of Project MK Ultra. So basically they wanted to study the effects of LSD, but instead of finding willing participants, which let's be honest, probably wouldn't have been that difficult, instead they used non-consenting people who were lured to safe houses by sex workers who were being paid by the CIA, and then once at these safe houses, they were slipped the drug and monitored from behind a one-way glass. For over a decade, the project gave the government more knowledge about the drug itself and what it does to the mind, it gave the knowledge about surveillance technology, and even sexual blackmail. In the end, the project was shut down in 1965, but people don't forget, and the damage was already done. Number 9. Vault 7 Vault 7 was definitely never meant to make it to the public eye, but unfortunately for the CIA, it got leaked. So what actually is Vault 7? Back in 2017, WikiLeaks started releasing a series of CIA documents. Vault 7 was a group of documents that contained hacking systems that were either developed or otherwise obtained by the CIA. For the most part, it should make you wary of your technology and how the government is using it. Many people know that apps will track our searches and data to learn about us and maybe even sell it to malicious companies, but it's much more than that. Weeping Angel has the ability to turn a Samsung television into a recording device, even if it appears that your television is switched off. Vault 7 also contained the ability to intercept all your iPhone messages before they got encrypted through apps like WhatsApp, Signal, and Telegram. And according to the documents, the CIA can allegedly take over your phone by exploiting vulnerabilities, but Apple has said that they patch these vulnerabilities as soon as they're aware of them. Number 8. Battalion 316 Intelligence Battalion 316 went through a few different names throughout its existence, but it was pretty much always functioning for the same reason. They were an army unit in Honduras that was responsible for carrying out political assassinations, and even kidnapping and causing pain to people who were seen as potential political competition throughout the 1980s. The group received both support and training from the CIA, even receiving their training at United States military bases. They were a military kill squad that definitely wasn't known for being friendly, committing various crimes like terrorism, misogyny, ethnic cleansing, and even so-called crimes against humanity. Their goal to remain in power in Honduras failed, leaving behind a long list of innocent victims. In 1996, members of the US Congress asked President Bill Clinton to release the documentation about the country's involvement with the human rights violations that took place in Honduras, and this is when we learned about the battalion. Number 7. MK Ultra Let's once again return to the Red Scare and the United States fight against Russians and communism. During the Cold War, they came under the belief that the communists had invented a drug that would allow them to control human minds, and the US wanted a piece of that, starting their own research into the technique under the name Project MK Ultra, trying to find their own mind control substance that could be turned into a weapon. It ran from the 50s to the 60s and led to many unknowing or even unwilling subjects being given illicit substances. The experiments were apparently covertly funded in American universities and research facilities, but it turns out that the experiments also took place in prisons and detention centers in the US, Japan, Germany, and the Philippines. The goal was to destroy the current mind and replace it with something new. Attempts included using electric shocks and illicit substances. For some, the experiments were fatal, and many others had their lives completely changed. Number 6. Operation Operation Cyclone Operation Cyclone became known as one of the longest and most expensive covert operations taken on by the CIA, costing around $630 million per year for a whole decade. So what was Operation Cyclone and why was the government pouring so much cash into it? It was an operation that worked to arm and finance militant Islamic groups during the military intervention by the USSR. The goal was to aid anti-Soviet resistance outside of the United States. They gave loans, aircrafts, weapons, and other military assistance to the groups in Afghanistan, costing the United States government billions of dollars for these so-called care packages. Eventually, the Soviets were pushed out of Afghanistan, but conspiracy was still spinning. Many of the weapons ended up being sold in local markets instead of going to the rebels, and some people believe that Osama bin Laden and the Al-Qaeda received assistance from the US military. Number five, 
5, Operation Ajax. In the 1950s, a coup took place in Iran, and the CIA documents about it weren't released until they were pressured to a total 64 years later. As it turns out, the agency played a large role in the coup that led to the end of the current Iranian Prime Minister, a rise in nationalism, and sour US-Iranian relationships remaining into the 21st century. The motivation was oil. The US and UK wanted Iran's oil, but their new Prime Minister made it inaccessible to them. So the two countries conspired to overthrow him and get the royal back. The coup seemed to fail, and the CIA sent a message to their base in Iran calling it off. But the CIA officer who received it said, nah, we're not done here. So the next day, with crowds allegedly hired by the CIA, the coup, or Operation Ajax, went through and the Prime Minister was overthrown. The monarchy and oil fields restored in the country. Anti-Western sentiment also being restored and growing to new and extreme levels. Number 4. The Five Eyes Are you familiar with one of the farthest reaching intelligence and espionage agencies in the world? You are probably a part of it and don't even know it. It is the once secret Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance. After World War II, the US and UK came together to create an information sharing alliance as a result of how important communication was for them during the war effort. And in 1956, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand were added to this group. The classification status on these documents was USA, UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, eyes only. And that was obviously a bit wordy, so they shortened it down to five eyes. It has been operating for 70 years now and is used for surveillance and sharing classified information between the five countries. The alliance was especially important during the Cold War when the countries shared a lot of information like the location of Soviet weapons in North America. The alliance was kept a secret until documents of the original UK and USA agreement were released back in 2010. Number 3. Operation PB Success Similarly to Operation Ajax, Operation PB Success was a covert CIA military operation that took place in another country, this time Guatemala. This was another coup that took place only a year after the one in Iran in 1954. At the time, Guatemala had a very new democracy, only being on their second democratically elected president. But the United States saw him as a threat, this being due to his allowance of the Guatemalan Communist Party to act freely and land reform movements that threatened US industries. The CIA then worked through various different plans of action to overthrow the Guatemalan government, including assassination and faking tensions between the country and Honduras. They spread false information, placed anonymous phone calls, and hired anti-communist students to create a fake opposition. Eventually, the president stepped down and their democracy was seen as unfavorable. The United States training that the Guatemalan military now had led to a war lasting decades, tearing apart the country. But PB success was a success as it worked, and they were able to deny CIA involvement until the documents were released in 1997. Number 2. The Secret War We're once again fighting communism, this time in Vietnam. But while the Vietnam War was taking place, a smaller secret war was taking place in Laos, attempting to stop communism from spreading to Southeast Asia. The Americans essentially used the countries of Laos and Cambodia to fight their own war against Northern Vietnam and communism, using their tribes as their soldiers. While it was clear that the small armies had no hopes of truly winning against Northern Vietnam, the United States and the CIA continued on with their fight, devastating the country and peoples of Laos and Cambodia. They came out of the war with their land and lives completely lost and changed, but the CIA wrote it down in their history books as a success, disregarding the country's sacrifice. The CIA's historical retrospective on the situation not being released until many years later. Number 1. Operation Condor it's the Cold War again, and the United States government are fighting against terrorism, this time under the code name Operation Condor. It was a campaign of political repression and so called state terror that was backed by the US and CIA. It involved many heinous activities like kidnapping, killings, political espionage, and much more, all taking place throughout South America. The CIA chose to describe it as a cooperative effort by the intelligence slash security services of several South. 
South American countries to combat terrorism and subversion. But really it was a lot more than that. Condor's key members were Argentina, Chile, Uruguay, Paraguay, Bolivia, and later Brazil. The United States provided them with planning, coordination, technical support, and military training all routed through the CIA. It led to many military dictatorships and numerous deaths throughout South America. And there is so much detail and information on this one that if you want it, you're just going to have to look it up for yourself. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Operation Northwoods. This is an operation that comes from the time of the Cold War, and it has to do with the tense relationship that was seen between the United States and Cuba at the time. Operation Northwoods, should it have gone forward, would have been a project that saw violence committed against US and Cuban civilians with the blame placed on the Cuban government. Messed up, right? These acts would include fake attacks of high magnitude, the hijacking of planes, the sinking of boats, like some really serious stuff. Basically, they just wanted to harm themselves just to place the blame on Cuba, and they wanted to do this in order to justify an all out war with Cuba, but thankfully, some people at the time had decided that this likely wasn't the smartest or the best route to take, and the idea was scrapped. For a long time, this was hidden from the public until years later, documents were revealed that showed this very dark truth. In our number nine spot today, we have Operation Wash Tub. This operation came to light in 2014 when documents became declassified and more people could learn about this Cold War era operation. Basically, this was a covert mission that had its sights set on Alaska. The plan detailed the training of different people who lived in Alaska. Like we're talking just ordinary residents. They wanted to train these people to both code and decode and a few other different spying tactics, which would have been so cool. I mean, I would have wanted to be picked so badly. Not that I would have even known it was happening, but you get what I mean. Basically, the plan was put in place in case the Soviet Union was to invade Alaska. Then these unsuspecting ordinary citizens would use their newly learned espionage techniques to get all the intel they could and secretly relay that information to high ranking US officials. As we now know, of course, this invasion never occurred, so the contingency plan wasn't needed, but there were 89 lucky temporary agents who were trained just for this purpose and I have never been more jealous in my entire life. In our number 8 spot today we have Project Minaret. This is a document that became declassified in 2013 as a part of the National Security Archives efforts. This historical document describes a sort of watch list of prominent Americans who were critical of the Vietnam War. The document explains that their overseas communications were tapped and listened into by the government from 1967 to 1973 and a quote from the document reads, quote, President Johnson wanted to know if the domestic anti-war movement was receiving help from abroad. The project expanded so much that it went on to include more than 1,600 people, including civil rights leaders like Martin Luther King Jr., Whitney Young, and Muhammad Ali. There were also people like Democratic U.S. Senator Frank Church of Idaho, Republican Senator Howard Baker of Tennessee, a New York Times columnist, and a Washington Post columnist. The surveillance began under President Johnson, but it continued on through to the Nixon administration. In the end, the only reason it was stopped was because Attorney General Elliot Richardson was concerned about its very doubtful and murky legality and decided that during the Watergate scandal that it probably would just be best to shut it down. I mean, they definitely had enough on their plate already at the time. In our number 7 spot today, we have Project Ice Worm. This secret mission took place in the 1960s and it was basically intended to build a series of mobile nuclear missile launch sites under the Greenland ice sheet because this would then house medium range missiles close enough that they would be able to strike targets within the Soviet Union. This project was called Project Ice Worm, but there was another project called Camp Century. Basically, Camp Century was to test out Project Ice Worm and see how likely it would be and how feasible it would be. So engineers went to work and created a network of underground tunnels and buildings that included places to stay, a kitchen, a hall for hanging out, there were supply rooms, and even a communication center and a nuclear power plant. This was all kept as a super secret for a long time and was even kept from the Danish government for seven years. In 1966, however, the project was cancelled because of the shifting ice. This created unstable conditions for the underground tunnels that are most likely crushed now, but still remain beneath the Arctic. In our number 6 spot today, we have the Pentagon crash. We have all heard about the devastating September 11th, 2001 attacks, but some of you might not know that on the day, there were actually four separate coordinated attacks all a part of
part of the same plan, and one of those attacks was on the Pentagon. There was a photo that was previously classified, but eventually has been released by the US government, and it shows the absolute devastation that was done by the commercial plane that crashed into the Pentagon. The plane was able to tear through all five rings that existed in the building. All of the people on board the plane that day, as well as 125 people that were in the building at the time, passed away in this horrible event. For obvious reasons, the initial photos of the Pentagon damage were withheld from the public or from circulating in the media, but now that they have been released, it just shows us all another side to that horrible, terrifying day. In our number 5 spot today, we have the UFO report. This photo is of a previously classified document from 1963. Although the document still has a lot of information that has been blacked out, the document is the description and report of an unidentified flying object or UFO encounter. This is said to have taken place over the desert of Nevada and the report was written in detail in order to have a written record of the event. This document is said to be the authentic report from the FBI, which is exactly why some of the details have still been omitted, despite it being declassified. This might seem like less of a big deal now, as in this day and age we have declassified video footage of similar kinds of encounters, but for 1963 this was huge. As discussions of alien or extraterrestrial life is a big part of our modern society, this document shows that these things have been on our minds for many, many years now. In our number 4 spot today we have Project 1794. This project was created with the goal to build a sort of saucer type aircraft that would be designed to shoot down Soviet bombers. The program, which was created in the 1950s, was quite ambitious and had some pretty lofty goals. A team of engineers began trying to build a disc shaped aircraft, but here's the real kicker. They wanted it to be capable of traveling at supersonic speeds at high altitudes. The documents about this project show that they wanted it to be able to travel at Mach 4, which is four times the speed of sound, and they wanted it to be able to reach an altitude of over 100,000 feet. At the time, the project was estimated to cost about $3 million, which is about $26 million today. In the end, the project was cancelled in 1961 because the craft failed tests and proved to be aerodynamically unstable, which of course would provide a whole slew of problems at high speeds, especially supersonic ones. In our number 3 spot today, we have the Manned Orbiting Laboratory. So for this one, this is a mission that was created in response to a Soviet Union secret mission called ALMAZ. Basically this program, called the Manned Orbiting Laboratory, was run by the Air Force and the Intelligence Community's National Reconnaissance Office, and the goal of it was to spy on and throw the Soviet Union off track in space. Some of the documents in this mission have now been declassified, and according to them, one of the goals was to knock some of Moscow's satellites out of orbit or to fire projectiles at them. They even wanted to try and capture one of the Soviet satellites in space and then basically send it back down to Earth so that they could study it. That's so wild. And because of this, Moscow equipped their secret space station with a rapid fire cannon in order to stop any of this from happening. I seriously feel like I'm watching some sort of space action movie right now. I can't believe that these are real things that happened and they were created in the 60s and 70s. In our number 2 spot today, we have the Lunik kidnapping. Don't worry, Lunik is not a person and instead is a Soviet lunar satellite that was kidnapped just for one night. This project honestly sounds like it was taken straight from a movie and it has to do with the great space race. In the early 1960s, the Soviet Union wanted to make it as clear as possible that they were winning the race to space, so they launched a multinational exhibition of their Lunik satellites, which became the first spacecraft to impact the moon's surface. And when the Luna 3 returned, it brought with it the first ever pictures of the moon's far side. It was a big deal, and it's safe to say that the US wanted to know everything that they could about it. Of course, the satellite was heavily guarded, but it was Traveling from city to city for this exhibition, so undercover CIA agents went to work. Basically, they convinced the man who drove the transport truck to get some rest at a nearby hotel, and basically they would look after it for him while he rested. I'm sure it was a bit more complicated than this, but you get the gist. From here, the agents then took apart and photographed every single component of the thing before putting it back together and placing it back in the truck for its next tour date. There is no indication that before the operation became declassified that anyone outside of those involved knew what had happened that day. And I'm not gonna lie, that's a pretty hilarious plan and the fact that it worked is both shocking and 
pretty impressive. In our number one spot today, we have Operation Paperclip. This operation began in 1946 when the President of the United States at the time, Harry Truman, authorized it. Basically, the entire point of it was to lure scientists from Nazi Germany over to the United States after the Second World War. This was done in an effort to aid the country in their post war efforts, as well as to ensure that the valuable knowledge these people had would not end up in the hands of perhaps the Soviet Union or either side of the divided East and West Germany. Had it not been classified information at the time, this would have of course been highly controversial as many of these people were involved in, and sometimes even leaders of that hateful party. Former President Truman stood by his decision, saying that because of the relations with the Soviet Union, quote, this had to be done and was done. Several of the scientists a part of this program were later investigated because of their former ties, but one was only ever tried out of the over 1600. None of the paperclip scientists were ever found guilty for any crimes either in the United States or in Germany. Perhaps the most famous of all of the paperclip scientists was Werner von Braun, played a huge role in advancing NASA's Apollo missions. Number 10, Project Stargate. If you've watched Stranger Things, then this one probably sounds familiar to you. In the show, Eleven started off as an experiment to psychically spy on the Russians, and turns out, this was actually real. In the 1970s in California and later in Maryland, the CIA recruited numerous men and women who claimed they had ESP or extrasensory perception. People with ESP typically say that they can read minds or move objects without touching them. They were recruited to try and help uncover military and domestic intelligence secrets. Mostly they just wanted them to spy on the Russians by reading their minds. The government covered it up of course because why would they want want people knowing they're trying to use magic powers to win a war. But in 2017, when 12 million pages of records were declassified, all of the information about the so-called Project Stargate became public knowledge. People learning that they had been using the men and women to locate hostages and even track fugitives throughout the states. In our number 9 spot today, we have Operation Cottage. This operation was a tactical maneuver which completed the Aleutian Islands campaign in World War II, and it was a joint services assault on the island of Kiska. On August 15th, 1943, Allied military forces landed on the island with the aim to eliminate the Imperial Japanese forces that had occupied the island since June 1942. Unbeknownst to the Allied forces, however, the Japanese forces had secretly abandoned the island two weeks earlier under the cover of thick fog using submarines and ships. So basically what I'm saying is that when the Allied forces landed here, they were unopposed. Unfortunately, that doesn't mean that no one lost their lives. There were around 313 casualties, which were a result of stray Japanese landmines, vehicle accidents, and a series of friendly fire incidents. Most of the friendly fire incidents were between Canadian and American troops as they mistook each other for Japanese forces as they came from opposite sides of the island. In our number 8 spot today, we have rabbit telepathy. This is an experiment that was originally conducted after World War II, but wasn't brought to light until many years later, well into the 2000s. Said to have been a part of of quote, Soviet and Czechoslovakian parapsychology research that was done from the end of World War II through to the Cold War era, this is one of the most grisly and truly unbelievable experiments that were conducted. Basically, they were trying to use rabbits to communicate with submarines, which is just already a bizarre kind of concept on a regular level, but of course the way in which they conducted this experiment was wrong and inhumane and truly just very cruel. Just a little heads up if you're sensitive to animal stuff, I would maybe just skip over this one. You know, I want to be safe, okay? So for the test, they would take a mother rabbit who had recently just had bunnies. They would keep the mother in a lab on shore, and then they would take the bunnies down with them in the submarine. Slowly, one by one, they would take the life of the bunnies, and each time they did, the mother rabbit's brain would produce a detectable and recordable reaction. Is this one of the worst things I've ever heard? Yes. What's even worse is that the report then goes on to say that other examples of quote animal telepathy research continued into the 1970s and that it included other animals such as dogs, bears, birds, insects, and fish. I can't imagine they were, but let's just hope that these other tests weren't quite so cruel and inhumane. In our number 7 spot today we have Operation LAC. Operation LAC, which is short for Large Area Coverage, was a Cold War era project that involved the US Army Chemical Corps. Basically it was a test 
that was designed to see whether or not it would be possible or feasible to taint a large area by dropping chemical agents from planes. To test this idea, they dropped, quote, a myriad of microscopic particles from planes covering an area that is said to span from the Rockies to the Atlantic, from Canada to the Gulf of Mexico. So yes, definitely a large area indeed. In fact, it was so large that this is actually the largest test that the Chemical Corps had ever undertaken. According to the declassified documents relating to this operation, the tests, quote, did not provide the Corps with nearly as much data as the Corps would like. And then it goes on to say that, quote, to obtain additional data, the Corps planned further tests for the next fiscal year. Okay, well that's a little daunting. While not necessarily the same operation, also in the Cold War era was a similar test conducted that targeted a neighborhood in St. Louis, Missouri. This test saw the area being sprayed with zinc cadmium sulfide. At the time, those local to the area were being told that, quote, the government was testing a smoke screen that could shield St. Louis from aerial observation in case the Russians attacked. But of course, decades later, documents revealed that the tests were actually a part of a biological weapons program. And to make matters even worse, the zinc cadmium sulfide was linked to an increase in cancer among the residents of the neighborhood. In our number six spot today, we have the embassy missions. This is a secret that was hidden not only from the American people, but also the people that were being spied on and listened to, but it wasn't revealed until 2007 when a document was leaked. This document is one that named 38 different embassies and missions that were so called targets of US surveillance. The document didn't quite make it clear whether or not these targets were being looked into by only the NSA or if the CIA and FBI were also involved. The document described certain things like bugging fax machines with devices that allowed them to listen in on conversations, and the document also listed the names of different programs that are used within the embassies. The document showed that the embassies targeted weren't just those of countries who seemed to be enemies with the United States, and instead included places like India and Mexico, Greece and Turkey. It appears as if the goal was to gain insider information into the diplomatic relations between the targets and the United States. The EU embassy in Washington DC was one of the targets on this document, and this leak had the potential to have jeopardized one of the largest attempted free trade agreements in the world, because shortly after this all came out, negotiations were set to begin between the EU and the United States. The French president at the time made his anger about the situation very public and stated that all future negotiations will only be made under the agreement that the United States cease all unauthorized surveillance of any EU buildings or personnel. In our number five spot today, we have Operation Fast and Furious. No, this isn't another installment of the beloved franchise, although family is everything. This actually was a tactic that was used by the Arizona US Attorney's Office and the Arizona Field Office of the United States Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, ATF. As they were conducting a series of sting operations from 2006 to 2011. Basically, the idea for this operation was to allow licensed firearm dealers to sell weapons to illegal buyers, hoping to track the firearms down later to Mexican drug cartel leaders so that they could then arrest them. So not only did this not lead to the results that they were hoping for, but it actually had terrible outcomes. Many of the firearms that were being tracked have been found at crime scenes on both sides of the United States-Mexico border, and one was even found at the scene where United States Border Patrol agent Brian Terry was killed. In our number four spot today, we have Operation Starfish Prime. This is an operation that took place in 1962, and it was a joint one between the US Atomic Energy Commission and the Defense Atomic Support Agency. Basically, they detonated a thermonuclear device in the sky above the Pacific Ocean. They launched it from the Johnson Atoll using a Thor rocket, and once at an altitude of about 240 miles, they set it off, which ended up producing a yield of about 1.4 megatons. The electromagnetic pulse was so powerful and widespread that it disabled not only most of the equipment that was set up to measure it, but it also took out streetlights and caused telephone outages in Hawaii, nearly 900 miles away. The electrons released caused an aura that could be seen over most of the Pacific Ocean, and according to the documents, the quote, visible phenomena due to the burst were widespread and quite intense, and apparently it was visible for days. In the end, it is said that the researchers weren't expecting such a powerful blast of electromagnetic pulse, and they were also anticipating that the electrons from the blast would get stuck in the Earth's own magnetic field for months, possibly even years, but alas, they did. This went on to create a radiation belt around the planet that eventually went on to disappear 
disable at least six satellites, which included the world's first commercial satellite, only a few months after it was launched. The government didn't even tell AT&T what had happened until like 2005. In our number three spot today, we have Acoustic Kitty. Apparently, in 1967, the CIA was spending millions of dollars trying to make cats into spies. I don't know why they chose the one animal that does not care what you want it to do, but they did, and Project Acoustic Kitty was born. The project basically involved implanting electronic spy equipment into real living cats who would then be trained to basically eavesdrop on unsuspecting people. This Cold War era plan was intended to be used on those in the Soviet Union. The project had a whole slew of issues, of course, because cats can get hungry and distracted, and unfortunately the first time this plan was being tested, there was a catastrophic outcome. The project of course was cancelled, and the researchers said that they believed they could train cats to move short distances, but that quote, the environmental and security factors in using this technique in a real foreign situation forces us to conclude that for our intelligence purposes, it would not be practical. In our number two spot today, we have the cat drop. Not really sure why the government is obsessed with cats, but here we go. Apparently, the United States Office of Strategic Services, once upon a time, decided that the very best and most sensical way to ensure that bombs that had been dropped reached their intended naval targets was to strap them to cats and then drop them from planes. I know. Absolutely horrific. Definitely not my plan. They thought up this strange project because for some reason they thought that the cats would just be able to avoid the water and instead direct themselves to the target. Strange in theory, catastrophic in reality. There of course is no way to prevent these animals from fainting midair and if you were dropped from a plane suddenly with no parachute and a bomb strapped to you, you'd probably also faint because what in the actual hell? Definitely one for the history books. We can all be thankful that this is not something that carried on for long. In our number one spot today, we have Unit 731. The Imperial Japanese Army's Unit 731 conducted some pretty horrifying experiments during World War II that certainly are shocking to anyone who learns about them. The experiments were meant to be done as a way to prepare for biological warfare, but the process was gruesome and extremely inhumane. Different medical schools and universities provided doctors and other research staff to help conduct these experiments, and they used both prisoners and civilians as the guinea pigs for them. There were a bunch of different experiments that were conducted during this time, some of which involved injecting them with pathogens such as plague or cholera or anthrax. Others involved vivisection or operations with no anesthesia, putting them in a pressure chamber to see how much a human can withstand before bursting, or live weapons testing. It is hard to even believe that this was a real thing that happened, and we honestly can't even begin to imagine what those people were forced to face during that time. After World War II, however, the United States gave immunity to Shiro Ishii, who is the Japanese Army medical officer responsible for lethal human experimentation and biological warfare projects. Many of these experiments he conducted just to see what would happen, why not? American scientists decided that this information would be valuable, so they decided to give him immunity in exchange for the information on chemical and biological warfare. Shiro was never tried for his crimes. Mm -hmm.